Hello, this is The Counting Crasher, recapping The Courtship, Season 1, Episode 11, A Secret Revealed. Last week, we said goodbye to Mr. Nazir, the socialite with class and sass, and now we have four suitors remaining, the sincere Mr. Judge, the protective Mr. Cones, the honest Mr. Bocchicchio, and the villainous Mr. Chapman. But all kidding aside, please do not troll or attack Lincoln on social media. We all need to do better in this world, including him. Let's not become villains in our own story. Let's be noble her heroines like Miss Remy. And before we get into the recap, I want to put out that the scene we are shown at the end of the last episode of Nicole saying to Mr. Chapman, quote, a connection like ours comes once in a lifetime, end quote, I believe was not said to Mr. Chapman. If you go back and watch the footage, we never actually see her say this. The camera is either far away and we can't see her lips moving, or we are shown the back of her head while she speaks. We are never actually shown her saying this directly to Mr. Chapman. It's a voiceover. I believe this was editing and that Miss Remy, Remy actually said those words to Mr. Bocchicchio. And this is the editors and the producers trying to build up the drama and the heartbreak. I'll touch more on this later in the video. Now back to the recap, we start off the day with the suitors playing poker outside their quarters. They're discussing Mr. Chapman's overnight with Miss Remy. Mr. Bocchicchio expresses he's confused and doesn't want to be Miss Remy's second option. Mr. Judge is confused because he feels they share a strong emotional bond. Mr. Cones is also confused. But Mr. Chapman states, that his confusion is now gone. He does not elaborate at this moment, but we learn more later, and trust me, it's tactless. Meanwhile, the Remy's are having a beautiful breakfast in a fancy parlor when the daily tea arrives. It reads, there is, there is a pleasant buzz around the castle. Could it be the hum of contentment as our heroine and suitors dance towards the final act? What is clear is that work is the order of the day. After all, life cannot solely consist of fancy dinners and balls and the fruits of your labors, an outdoor feast, all prepared by your own fair hands. The host litter jokes in the episode that it's, it's a quote, Regency chore time, or as he'd like to call it, chore play. <laughs> it's, it's dorky and funny. Um, the point is the suitors will be making dinner while spending time with Miss Remy and her court. Up first is Mr. Judge and Miss Remy. They're tasked to herd the castle ducks from the lawn to make room for a picnic table that Mr. Judge will later set up with Mr. Remy. This sounds easy, but it seemed difficult when watching it. Who knew herding ducks was hard? Miss Remy in her ITM says Jessie is everything she wants from a guy, but she's still looking for that fun side. And I think the duck date definitely brought out Mr. Judge's fun and silly side. Miss Remy tells us that Jesse is listening and trying. He's becoming fun, flirty, and spontaneous. She calls him a front runner. Unfortunately, we are not shown Miss Remy and Mr. Judge uh, oh, sorry, unfortunately, we're not shown Mr. Remy and Mr. Judge interacting. Uh, we just see them putting up the table, but not actually talking. So we don't get to hear what Mr. Remy thinks of Mr. Judge. I think this is a choice by the editors because it's not relevant to their storyline that they want to sell us. Miss, Miss Remy isn't going to pick Mr. Judge at the end. We are barely seeing him on our screens. It sucks. I want to see more Mr. Judge. He's sweet and wonderful. Up next is Mr. Chapman and Miss Remy. They will be collecting honey from the beehive, and then Mr. Chapman will be harvesting the honey with Miss, Mrs. Remy. Miss Remy talks about the chemistry being there with Mr. Chapman, but she hopes that she can get to commitment with him. 
Mr. Chapman sees this task as a test to see how much Mrs. Miss Remy trusts him. Ah, no comment. <laughs> you can tell Nicole did not like the beehive activity. She was clearly stressed by it and wanted it over ASAP, and I don't blame her. I would not have liked this date. Lincoln, however, was calm and he did a good job. Once they were done, they don't hug or anything because they have all that bee equipment, but he goes off to see Mrs. Remy to harvest the honey. Mrs. Remy is really sweet and kind as always. She asks Mr. Chapman questions about the nomadic lifestyle and she is literally nodding and smiling the whole time acting interested us as this man literally tells her he's living out of an SUV and on the road nonstop. Now, he has every right to live like this, and I'm not judging, but we all know Nicole, based on what she's told us, would not be happy with this lifestyle. Mrs. Remy then asks him, do you think you'll be able to make some sort of commitment at some time? Again, being very kind and generous. His answer, I don't know. We cut to both parents in an ITM saying there is no way this is going to work out. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> the problem is he is selling Nicole the idea he is in love with her and wants to commit to her, basically lying to her and manipulating her. It's not her fault. She is a kind, loving, trusting person. She should not be embarrassed. He should be the one that's embarrassed for treating her this way. Next up, Mr. Cones and Miss Remy, they will be milking a goat, and then Mr. Cones will join Miss Clary to make goat cheese. This is a cute day. They, there is a lot of giggling. Mr. Cones says no milk is coming out as he's trying to milk the goat, and Nicole says she doesn't think it's an udder. He immediately lets go. It's hilarious. He's just, he's comic gold. As Mr. Cones is milking the goat, he tells the goat, literally, you are a lovely lady, and, and he thanks her for the milk. And Mr. Cones finally figures out how to do this. He just doesn't stop till he gets it, and it's sweet. They hug and cheer in victory. Then Miss Remy tries to milk the goat herself, and it kicks the bucket and spills milk all over her. Mr. Cones in his ITM says he doesn't feel the best about his status with Nicole. He feels like she's been wrapped up with everything that's been going on with Mr. Chapman. He says he feels a physical connection on his end and is waiting for it to be reciprocated. Nicole in her ITM says they have the emotional connection and she's not sure why they haven't achieved the physical connection yet. She says they never talk about it. So the date ends and Mr. Cone then heads to see Miss Clary to see to make the goat cheese. Miss Clary asks how he is going to get romantic with Miss Remy. He says he's trying, but Miss Remy has to want it too. It seems to me Mr. Cones and Miss Remy are giving each other mixed signals. They both want to explore a physical connection, but he's in his head because of Mr. Chapman, and I don't blame him. And Miss Remy is just confused as to why it's happening. This makes me a bit sad. I'm worried at this point if they haven't explored the physical side, they're not gonna. And they kind, they probably waited too long. It's too bad because they have such a strong emotional connection. Next up is Mr. Bokikio with Miss Remy. They will be collecting eggs from the chickens. And then Mr. Bokikio will be baking with Miss Baker. Lots of baking. Mr. B Mr. Bokikio, when he hears this, says he loves that. I love it too. I love our two Danny Bees. They're so cute. Mr. Bokikio in his ITM talks again about the overnight with, Ms. with Lincoln bothering him. He reiterates his confusion and frustration over Mr. Chapman and Miss Remy. He doesn't get why she would keep him around since he is set on his van life and doesn't want commitment with Nicole. Mr. Bokikio says no one here is fully committed and that he's the most committed person here and it bothers him. During the date, you can feel the awkwardness between them. 
Nicole wants to know what is going on. She can tell something is bugging him. Miss Remy says to him, I don't know if I should put all my eggs in one basket. And he responds, I don't know if you should either. Then says he's kidding. You can see the tension between them. Nicole in her ITM says, quote, at this point, I would give Danny B the world if he would just open up to me. There's no doubt here that she's talking about Danny B. They're not cutting in and out. It's a full cut from beginning to end. She's talking about Danny B when she says this sentence. There's no editing happening. We can see her say every word sequentially. This is why I'm convinced when she said in the previous episode, a connection like ours comes once in a lifetime. She's talking about Mr. Bokikio, not Mr. Chapman. I mean, it doesn't even make sense. Like, she, anyway, I'll talk more about it later. She asks him what's going on, and he tells her he's bothered by, their, by her overnight with Lincoln, that none of this is adding up. What she tells him and what she wants doesn't match. It's night and day. He doesn't get why she would have an overnight with Lincoln. He tells her he likes her, but he needs reassurance. Nicole says her stomach is dropping. She realizes they can't move forward if they don't share how they feel, that him telling her, I like you at the final four isn't enough. Then she confesses, I'm in love with you and I have been for a while. It's important to note, she doesn't say this to any other suitor. We also see her say this clearly to him with no cuts or edits, so we know this happened. The only person that she's been saying all this affirmative stuff, including a connection like ours comes once in a lifetime, has to be Bokikio. And it's editing that's making us think otherwise. She goes on to say, this is me being vulnerable and I don't want to have I don't want to have to do this. His response, I'm struggling with all this because I really like you. I really do. I'm not running. I'm still here. But how am I supposed to be vulnerable with you when there are other guys in the relationship? I'm trying the best I can. This is why I'm struggling. I think he's being really honest and sincere. He's in a hard spot. We see... We see Nicole in her ITM say that dating multiple men at once is really hard. She's struggling too. He's not seeing this and is frustrating. She asks him, do you even want to be here? And he says, I do want to be here. He's clearly frustrated and tells her, let's just save it for another time. Nicole says that it's not going to work for her and she walks away. This is so sad. <laughs> If we took out the manipulation Mr. Chapman has been doing both to Nicole and to the suitors, I feel like he's playing mind games with everyone. None of this would be happening, and it just makes me sad. The next day we see Mr. Bokikio join Miss Baker to bake. This happens because it was raining and they had to extend it. They hug and she asks about the date. He tells her that Miss Remy stormed off. Miss Baker is shocked to hear this. He goes on to tell her, of course, I like your sister. She wants marriage she, and she's entertaining people that don't want that. Miss Baker says she's heard there are guys that can't propose at the end of this, but she hasn't heard that the guys have said marriage isn't in the cards. She asks if this is actually happening and he tells her yes. While Mr. Bokikio is with Miss Baker, we see the other three suitors back at their quarters discussing how the day went. Mr. Chapman says he, fi fi <laughs> he has finally found clarity. Ugh. That his clarity is he can't fall in love with this girl. By the way, I don't like that he's saying this girl and not her name. She is not a girl. It's disrespectful. He literally says in his ITM, he has post not clarity. I can't even respond to that. It's a vulgar statement. That he knows there is nothing. That he's exhausted from trying to convince himself he is in love. I'm sorry, but he's acting like the victim here when in fact he is the one being deceitful. 
He tells the suitors that he only wants a fling with Nicole. He does not see a future with Nicole. Then he thanks the men for listening and he leaves. And it's unbelievable. You could see the pain in Mr. Cohn's and Mr. Judge's face. Like he is being so insensitive what it, with what he was saying to them. As soon as he's gone, Mr. Cohn says, that just left me like a train. Both of them look sad. Mr. Judge says, it's hard to turn a blind eye. Mr. Cohn says, once you have clarity, your actions affect others. You are causing harm. Mr. Cones decides to write Miss Remy an anonymous letter to tell her the truth. He, wa he states that he wants Nicole to be happy, that he wants to protect and guard her heart regardless of the cost to him. I just love Mr. Cones. We should all be so lucky to have a person like this in our lives, and I'm glad he's looking out for her. Back at the castle, Miss Remy and her court discuss the day, specifically Mr. Chapman. It's important to note Miss Baker is not present. I assume she's still with Mr. Bocchicchio, so she has not had the chance to tell them about their conversation. Miss Remy tells Nicole, oh, sorry, Mrs. Remy tells Nicole that Chapman really likes his nomadic lifestyle, and he's not ready to give that up yet. She thinks he's running away from something. Mr. Remy says he would not approve of Mr. Chapman. He's not stable. They show Nicole in her ITM saying she thought her parents were on board with Lincoln, but now clearly, clearly they aren't, and that she would never consider marrying someone her parents didn't approve of. Her mom says, this is your life, Nicole. You have to decide. We jump to dinner, which is moved indoors due to rain. Everyone is in attendance, Miss Remy, the court, the suitors. You can see on the screen where everyone was seated. Nicole is at the head of the table, seated by her side are her sister and friend. Mr. Chapman is strategically, in my opinion, placed as far from her as possible. Her father right by his side in between the two of them. Her mother across from him. I, I can't help but think this was intentional, that the court was protecting Miss Remy, whether it was conscious or not. Because they know. They know what's going on. The suitors all begin talking about the deep private conversations they were having, and Miss Baker asks, what exactly is being discussed? And Mr. Chapman replies, what is said in the parlor stays in the parlor, and clearly both Miss Remy and Miss Baker do not like this answer. Miss Baker says, no, no, let me in. I just want to know if you all feel like you made the right choice by coming here. Mr. Chapman responds, no regrets, and Miss Baker glares at him. They're interrupted with a letter handed to Miss Remy. As she reads it, her face changes. She clearly isn't happy. Everyone is sitting in silence, looking panicked and worried. Miss Remy gets up shaking and is followed by her sister and friend. Miss Baker, at this point, instinctively goes into protector mode, asks her parents to go for a walk. She doesn't want them to see this. And she's also protecting Nicole. It's actually... I love her so much. It's, it's, it's amazing to see. We see Mrs. Remy crying in her ITM saying she looked at Mr. Chapman and knew what was coming and that no one wants to see their child in pain. It was honestly heartbreaking to see. I don't like seeing <laughs> Mrs. Remy cry. Once the parents are gone, Nicole addresses the suitors. She tells them she got an anonymous letter and she says a whole bunch of other stuff. I'll just go into what the letter says. She reads it out loud. Dear Miss Remy, it is with a heavy heart that I must lift any fog that surrounds you. Here's the slide, I forgot to switch. <laughs> Let me start over. Dear Miss Remy, it is with a heavy heart that I must lift any fog that surrounds you. Mr. Chapman's heart does not beat for you. You may think that he loves you, but he doesn't, and has acknowledged as much to his fellow suitors. He has tried to force himself into feeling something, 
but sadly sees your connection as a fun fling. After spending time with you alone at the castle, he knows he cannot fall in love with you. You deserve to know the truth. Most respectfully, Anonymous. She looks up and asks Mr. Chapman if it's true. Mr. Chapman says, I mean, I would not word it like that, but yes, and I would love to talk to you. We see Miss Baker in her ITM saying she is angry with Lincoln for speaking with the guys in the parlor about his feelings for Nicole instead of speaking to Nicole. Both her and Tessa say they are feeling played and manipulated, and they are. All of them are. They leave Miss Remy and Mr. Chapman to talk. He tells her he was going to tell her. She says, you almost left, broke my heart, then came back, and now this. He tells her everyone has been telling him that they were right together, so he stayed to get clarity. He tells her he wishes he could love her, but he can't. And her face at this point, I mean, I'd be pissed by that statement too. She says, I'm not asking you to do anything you don't want to do. That you told me you were falling in love with me. He told her this. He told her parents this. And the letter literally says you can't. So this is the level of deception we're seeing. He says yes. So he admits to this. And that's how I felt in the moment. He went on to say, I'm crazy about you. It's fun, really fun, but I can't give you what you want. I mean, he shouldn't have said that. It's disrespectful, but whatever. She responds, I put so much trust in you, my heart and my time in you. I sent someone home who really cared. He says, I promise you, you will have a man that loves you, as if that's going to make everything better. <laughs> she responds, I hope so, and I hope I'm never played again like this. His face at this moment is priceless, but honestly, I don't think he gets it, and I don't think he ever will. She says, I don't have anything else to say. He gets up to leave and says, I want to hug you, and she says, you need to go. She looks heartbroken. He looks like an idiot. End of story. Her sister and friend rush over to console Nicole. She says, I took a chance and it backfired. Her sister says, you can't think of it that way. Nicole says, he seems so sincere in his words. He took my heart, broke it once. I gave him another chance. He broke it again. It's not fair to me. It was hard to say goodbye because he made me feel a way I haven't felt in a long time. Now, all I can say is this guy was love bombing her. Nothing he was saying was real. So what she was feeling wasn't real. What she has with the other suitors is real. They're sincere. They're not manipulative. They're good guys. And I'm pretty sure she sees this now. Hindsight is always 2020. The next day is the farewell dance. Miss Remy says she is at a low point, but that she deserves loves and needs to command and res the respect that she deserves. She looks stunning and she's carrying herself so amazingly at this point. Like the crumbled person we saw earlier at this point is gone and you see the confident woman that she is and I'm here for it. All three suitors are in the dance card. No one is safe and all three men say they're nervous in their ITMs. First up is Mr. Judge. She tells him she is grateful for him, that she sees him and hears him. He says it means the world to him to hear her say this, that every day they have more fun. They hug and she asks him to stay. He spins her around and gives her a kiss on her cheek. He says he's thrilled and feeling good about the future. Next up is Mr. Bokikio, who tells her he is sorry for making her cry. He didn't mean to. He was happy. She was vulnerable with him. It helped him feel more confident. Nicole says she feels bad about running from him because it's something she's done in relationships before, and she doesn't want to repeat mistakes. 
He tells her, I promise I'll only try to make us cry from laughter from here on out. She says, you promise? And he says, I'll do my best. She asks him to stay. He kisses her on the cheek and gives her a hug. Nicole in her ITM says Danny gives her butterflies and that's what she wants in a relationship. Last is Mr. Cones. He asks her right away if she sees potential in them because he sees it. He's seen it since day one. She tells him she wouldn't change a thing about him, that he's incredible. I 100% agree. <laughs> he says thank you in sighs and relief. He then confesses that he has the he was the one that wrote the anonymous letter, that he wanted to give her clarity. She said she was glad that he wrote the letter, thanked him, and asked him to stay. He kisses her and hugs her. They invite the other guys. By the way, kisses her on the cheek. They all just kissed her on the cheek. They invite the other guys to come down and celebrate. I also wanted to note that the episode ends with the host saying who will prevail? And the camera zooms in on Mr. Bokigia. Just saying. I'm convinced Miss Remy picks him in the end. I guess we'll find out if I'm right next week. So that's it for the recap. It feels like it was very long. Um, if you enjoyed the content, please like the video. Please subscribe. It helps me with creating content. Thank you, everyone, and we'll see you next week.